So we join with a lot of other groups in defense of wild salmon, which is the lifeblood of British Columbia, of the coastal communities. If there was any doubt as to the grave challenge BC's wild salmon face for survival, it has been put to rest in this, the most disastrous year on record for salmon returning to BC's rivers to spawn. Nowhere is the dire state of wild salmon more evident than the Glendale River in Night Inlet, home to more commercial salmon farms than any other place on the coast, where local eco-tour operators are reporting the collapse of a vital and once prolific salmon run. We journeyed recently to the spectacular Glendale with Tide Rip Grizzly Tours to capture firsthand a dwindling grizzly population starving this season in the absence of salmon. There was never any significant barrier uh, activity here. There just wasn't that movement of salmon. So and that's for the first time in the six years that I've been coming up here. This is usually a very, very productive area. So. In a normal year, there would be 50 grizzlies on this river fattening up on salmon in preparation for winter hibernation. The phenomenon has given rise to a wildly successful ecotourism industry as thousands come from around the world to see these majestic creatures thriving in their natural environment. This year is, however, a sadly different story. This year we had 8,000 fish come back. It's the very low returns, and the bears have just given up on trying to catch a salmon. Less than a decade ago, a million salmon returned to the Glendale. What began as an already dire prediction from the Department of Fisheries and Oceans of 150,000 at the outset of this season has plummeted to fewer than 10,000. Not nearly enough for adult grizzlies to sustain themselves, let alone rear and give birth to their young. In lieu of their staple salmon diet, the bears have been left to feed on dying sedge grass and whatever tiny marine critters they can find under rocks. So they're coming down, rolling the rocks in the inner tidal zone, eating small sculpins, little blenny eels. And these are referred to as isopods. It's like an aquatic insect. This troubling evidence comes as esteemed fish biologist and vocal critic of salmon farms, Alexandra Morton, leads a constitutional challenge in the BC Supreme Court that questions the right of the BC government to regulate and license fish farms. Morton has been gathering and bringing to light a mountain of scientific evidence published in the world's top scientific journals, clearly demonstrating the catastrophic damage on wild salmon from fish farms. I get all the time, oh Alex, it can't be nearly as bad as you say, but as a biologist, it is bad. But I'd say to the Canadian people, if you want wild salmon, you better be heard right now, because the way it's going right now, we're not going to have wild salmon in 10 years. This time, she has the support of the ecotourism industry and commercial fishermen, who have witnessed firsthand the devastating economic impacts of salmon farms for BC. We represent uh, wilderness tourism or nature-based tourism operators in British Columbia and uh, a significant number of our members live on the coast of British Columbia and are vitally concerned with what's happening with the infection of the wild salmon by the sea lice incubated on the sea farms. What, what we have here is that we have an industry for instance bear, bear viewing that depends on salmon. The uh, decline in the wild salmon will lead to the demise of our tourism industry. People just won't come here for the pretty scene. They want to see critters. They want to see whales and bears and eagles and seals and sea lions. And It's a big industry now. When I first started, uh, everyone was catching a fish. But now, nobody catches fish. They're all into just showing critters. And we've got some wonderful wildlife here. Martin's case seeks to undo a 1988 deal between the federal and provincial governments that handed over control of fish farms to the province. Unconstitutionally, Morton and her supporters argue. While the industry and our BC Liberal government continue to deny any negative impact from fish farms on wild salmon, the starving grizzlies in the Glendale tell a different story.
Not only is the collapse of our salmon bad for the bears, it spells disaster for our entire coastal ecosystem. As salmon, especially the pinks, who are the most vulnerable to sea lice from fish farms, feed many other fish and wildlife and fertilize our forests. Wild salmon are the basis for our $1.4 billion tourism industry and at one time provided thousands of high-paying jobs and billions in local economic benefits from a now decimated commercial fishery. And of course, salmon is at the heart of the traditional way of life and sustenance of our indigenous peoples. Wild salmon and our rivers are the soul of our province. We have a very, very vibrant culture based upon the resources found within our territories and the primary one being salmon. The loss of the, any of the resources we've relied upon is, is catastrophic to our culture. We have ceremony for, to memorialize deaths. We have weddings that occur within our traditional ways. We have feasts that name our children. And all of these include the feeding of people and witnesses that come. So when we turn to our territories and we find a, a, an empty cupboard, where does that, it, it strikes at the very fabric of who we are. What's happening in the Glendale right now? In the Glendale right now, we're seeing the lowest pink salmon stocks we've ever seen. Uh, Coastwide, we know there's issues with pink salmon stocks, but the Broughton, as usual, is lower than everywhere else. And when they went to sea, I watched them, of course, these baby fish, and over 90% were heavily infected with sea lice. Regardless of the results of her legal challenge, Alexandra Morton and her colleagues in the tourism and commercial fishing industries continue to raise public awareness on this matter of vital importance for all British Columbians and for our environment. Thank you very much to Alexandra and to all the people. And to those who continue to deny the impact of fish farms on the collapse of our coastal salmon, I urge you to go to the Glendale to see the grizzlies. If this year is any indication, they may not be there for much longer. For Save Our Rivers Society, I'm Rafe Mayer. If the fish farms were shut down tomorrow, there would be an instantaneous rebound in the pink salmon. There are two-year fish. The chums would take three to five years. The Chinook would take longer. But I have no doubt the system would rebuild itself almost immediately. <laughs>